Well, good morning guys and welcome back to another video. Um, today is a very special trip. It's my first day back up in Northland for over six months. So I'm very excited to get in the water. I'm up here for about four days and I'm going to be doing a bit of diving and some big missions out wide as well. Um, and it's special for another reason. I've got a very special guest with me today on today's video, Mr. Kerry Flowers. I'm sure you all know him. Absolute legend from up here in the north. Um, so yeah, we're going to be getting out today. Kerry's going to show me his, uh, all his spot X's <laughs> and uh, we're going to be uh, having a look around and hopefully getting on some uh, fish and crayfish and some kinna. So see you guys soon. What are you talking about, bad viz carry? It looks bloody good, mate. Well, I think you'll find when we get around the corner, it won't be that great, but. True. It uh, should be pretty diveable, I'd say. Yeah, looks bloody good from Auckland standards, anyway. <laughs> G'day guys, welcome to 2022. I hope you've all had an awesome Christmas and New Year's break. This video was shot just the week before Christmas, which was that first weekend Auckland could uh, leave the city limits. And so of course I was straight up north and I linked up with Kerry, who um, I've been following his channel for years now and big inspiration for me with getting the marlin and whatnot. So it was awesome to finally get out with him. Here we are at this first spot and I was having a look around for some craze. Kerry kind of pointed me in the right direction. And yeah, found those Packwalls crayfish off the bat. Um, they were very dark shelled, which I haven't seen before. And then yeah, also found these Pawa. They were all pretty tiny, but it was cool to see them around. Next up, we moved out to a pin um, and there were some trees hanging around. So I was lining them up, but given I was up there for four days, I wasn't really in a rush to take anything. So I let the, those ones swim by. And then I found this massive moray eel. I've seen a few of these in the past, but this one was ginormous. So had to get a quick shot of that. We then moved back closer to shore since there weren't many uh, eating fish hanging around that pin and I found this really nice crayfish. It was really tucked away in this little triangular crevice here which was perfect for grabbing so he had nowhere to go, got my hands on his horns and out he came and that one was straight in the bag and went home with us that night. With the cray and some kinna Kerry had collected we had enough for a feed so we headed in and called it a day. All right, good morning guys. Welcome back, day two of this Northland trip. Um, today, Kerry and I are at the beach now, ready to launch. Sun's just coming up and the plan is we're gonna head out wide and we're gonna put some baits down. We'll probably drop some jigs out there as well and see what we can get onto. See you guys when we're out there. Beautiful sunrise out here this morning, glassy conditions, we are very blessed. Alright so uh, we've paddled out a wee bit now, probably I don't know, 8 or 10 k's and we found some birds working and uh, cast some sabikis in, we're hoping to find ourselves some live bait to take out with us. We've got something, ah, not a, li not a mackie. Little snapper, yeah. That's not what we're after. Damn. Oh well, he will go back. But yeah, there's fish everywhere here, so I'm sure we'll get some kahawai, if not some bait fish. <laughs> See that? Alrighty. <laughs> well, I um, <laughs> chuck the soft bait on. Because I wasn't having much luck on the sabikis and got a nice big kahawai. So I think that's going to go out as a live bait. <laughs> he almost knocked himself out doing that. <laughs> Gotta give himself a concussion. <laughs> oh, big kahawai. Big kahawai. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Get this guy wrapped up. Gonna tell that's gonna be our live bait, I think. All right, uh, got the kahawai rigged up, same as usual. Bridle through the front of the eyes there, 10 barrow hook and 200 pound leader. 
and he is out and not really kicking. <laughs> ah, yeah, there he goes, he's away. <laughs> hey, come back. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, we paddled out to this first spot. We're in the bloody middle of nowhere. And I've rigged up, this is the rig I'm running today. So I've got a ledger rig, two hooks, um, and some Jack Max, which I've caught out from Lee on my live bait missions. And now I'm um, going to drop them on the spot and hope for the best. Oh, I think I may be hooked up. Yeah, I think I am. I think I'm hooked up to something small. See what it is. Just changed out the bait. I went from one of those mackerels to some squid, so maybe that's made the difference. Whatever I've got on the end here, though, it feels pretty small. There's a few head nods there, so that's something at least. There we go, a few more head nods as we're coming up to the surface here in the last sort of 10 meters oh it's a granddaddy harpooka a big one here he's actually already caught a couple of these so not unsurprised about this wow that's a big granddaddy harpooka well it's <laughs> as a unit de granddaddy harpooka that's definitely as big as the biggest one i've ever caught i think got pretty spiky teeth so i'm gonna get the rag in there pull this guy on board but there he is that is a unit granddaddy harpooka what a stunning looking fish if you haven't seen one of these before um they're also called scorpion fish really uh, poisonous spines all over its body and that's why I'm holding it in the mouth like this but all over the top and it's it's fins you don't want to get those in your hand so I think I'm going to put this guy back I really want to try one of these apparently they're good eating but um, I'm here for another few days so put this guy back today and um, keep working on these uh, hooker There we go, hooks out, and this big, big puppy's going back. guys off the water now after a long day out there we covered a lot of ground and paddled some good case um, wasn't the productive day we were hoping for unfortunately uh, Kerry's got himself a new finder and hadn't loaded the marks from his old finder into it so we we're pretty much searching blind out there today um, and we did find a few pins however yeah as you will have seen they weren't holding pucker we got those few granddaddy harpucker which was cold but yeah, not the productive day we were hoping for, but hey, that's just how it is sometimes, that's fishing for you. Um, still great day on the water nonetheless. And while we're out on the water, something pretty crazy is going on in the background here. So as you'll be able to see, massive fire over there. All, all that smoke, it's not cloud. As you can see, we've got blue skies over this side. Man, it's just this massive fire here. Um, we saw it when we got here first thing in the morning and as you'll see, it's pretty much smoke as, as far as the eye can see. So yeah, that's, that's uh, pretty interesting to come into that. The last few hours paddling in was just like face full of smoke. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap things up for today. This is the second day. Um, got another two days on the water. Um, going to do a bit more fishing tomorrow and then a bit of diving on the last day. So I'll see you guys then. Good morning guys, day three here on the Northland trip. Uh, things are looking very good today. Blessed with another mint day on the water. Bugger all wind and bright blue skies. So very happy about that. I'm at a spot that I've been wanting to try for a wee while now. I'm paddling out to some pins 
and I'm gonna look for some kingfish sign, do a bit of jigging, and if there's no kingfish sign, I might drop some baits and see what's on the bottom. Wow, I just missed it, but I just had a school of pink mau mau swim right up to the surface under my kayak. That was incredible. I didn't realize I came up to the surface like that. Look, there's something. <laughs> I wonder if they'll come back. Wow. Look, there's one. Oh no, that looks like kingfish. This might be the spot. Okay, that's kingfish. <laughs> Woohoo! Don't think this will be a very big one, but cool to know they're down there. I was going to change out my jig, but I thought after seeing those pink mau mau swim up to the kayak, I wouldn't want to miss the opportunity at getting one of these kingies, so chuck the jig that I had on straight down and we're on. Yeah, it doesn't feel very big, but it's a kingfish. Here it comes. Well, it's not a bad kingy, a legal one. There we go. Finally, first kingy for this trip. Just a little guy, so I think I might chuck him back. He's probably legal, but no real need to keep this this early in the day. I reckon if I keep at it, I'll probably get onto some more. So I think this guy will go home and then I'll chuck this jig back down. There we go. Beautiful kingy. And away he goes. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Feels good to be hooked into a good fish. Now let's find some more. Yep. All right, we're on. And this does not feel like a kingfish. If it is, it's tiny. Oh yeah, I think that's a rat kingy. Yeah, this is gonna be a real little kingy. Either a tiny kingy or a big snap. Could be a big snap. Oh no, it is a kingy. Just a little guy. Probably even smaller than that last one. Yeah, way smaller than that last one. Just a little cutie. There you go, hooks out. Yeah, that guy's going home. Alrighty, so I've moved spots again. Um, I've come out to the edge of these islands and there's a little rock out here breaking. So I figured it can't hurt to flick around a stick bait out here and see if there's any kings hanging on it. the roof I think. Ah, that's more like it. That's more like it. 
<laughs> Woohoo! Just went over a patch of sign and as soon as I saw it I dropped a jig because I thought that's probably Kingy's and we're on. He's telling me. Oh shoot. <laughs> he, oh my god, this is a goodie. He's tying me towards these rocks. He's trying to bust me off. We're getting barriers. We're dangerously close to these rocks. Oh, he's right down there in the weeds. Got to get him up. There he is. Oh, it's so shallow. So shallow. There he is. That's a nice kingy. Massive schools of blue mau mau down there I can see too. There we go. That's probably about the same size as that first one from this morning. Woohoo! Far out, that was an epic scrap. That was hard work. I thought it was going to be a much bigger kingy than this, but that's just, that was just some hard terrain to fight this fish over. Went from real deep to real shallow pretty quick. So there it is. Nice kingfish. Guys, I don't know, 80 centimetres, 85 maybe. Um, I think we'll take this one in case I don't get lucky for the rest of today. It'd be nice to have something to take home for Christmas. So I think this one will come home. I'll just give it a quick me measure to double check it's all good. And then check it in the back. All right, I'm back on that sign and there's fish busting up everywhere out here. I'm tempted to chuck a uh, stick bait out, but I think the jig's proven pretty successful today. So see if we can do it again. Oh, oh, Kingy chased it all the way up to the boat. Oh, they're here, they're here. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. How exciting, how exciting. Oh, there's a kingy on it, there's a kingy on it, on the stick bait. Oh, come on, hit it, hit it. Right next to the boat, there it is! Oh my god! I still haven't caught a kingy on a stick bait on the kayak. Oh, this might be it! Come on, come on! This has got to be it, come on! Nah, no follow that time. Alright, head all back out and try again. Alright, so I gave the old stick baiting a good crack, but unfortunately after seeing that kingy chase it up, I couldn't get one to stick, so um, I've moved on, I'm starting to head home, I've got a bit of a paddle though, so I'm going to stop off at a few spots on the way home and drop the old uh, catchy catchy jig. I just stopped here and I think I've got something on, on, on the line. Oh uh, yep, I do, and it is one of these fellas. So he is going to go back. Hoping to get a few snapper or something else to take home with that kingfish. Well, I'm just getting back to base now, guys. I uh, stopped off at a few places on the way home, but yeah, didn't have any luck there. Um, so yeah, calling it a day and heading in now. But what a crazy day that was. Some epic kingy action in there. Uh, first getting those ones on the jig and then having that one follow it up with the stick bait. That was so cool. And then, yeah, getting that nice one on the jig at the end there. So really happy with how that day turned out. And uh, I'm pretty keen to get in the water tomorrow, eyeing up these spots. And wow, it looks incredible for a dive. Uh, the water's really clear. And it looks like it's going to be good for some craze, so can't wait to get stuck into it tomorrow, and uh, I'll see you guys then. 
Good morning guys, fourth and final day here on the trip. Um, once again, blessed with some epic weather. It's glassy as out here. And I'm in the dive gear, uh, about to jump in at the spot and have a look around. So yeah, we'll see what we can find. Once I was in the water, I realized the viz wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be, but hey, first rock I looked under, there was a crayfish hanging out there, so I knew we were in the right spot. Although I gotta say guys, I had a pretty dusty start this day. I missed cray after cray after cray, probably three or four crays in a row where I missed every single one of them. So I was starting to think I'd lost my mojo, but shortly after I managed to find this guy and uh, he wasn't going anywhere. I very slowly crept up and once the opportunity came up, I pounced and got him. Yeah, so low key, that was a bit of an underwater sigh of relief, uh, getting that one out finally after missing so many. Uh, but moving along, I found more and more crays, plenty of them hanging around the spot, most of them little, um, and the big ones were sort of far and few. I also stumbled upon this crayfish mold on this dive. It's a little guy, but you might have seen if you follow me on Instagram, I brought it back home, cleaned it up, glued it together, and clear coated it, and now I have that sitting in my room, which is pretty awesome. And here's the next crayfish. This one was pretty decent and he was sitting in a pretty hard spot to get, but I'll let you see what happens. Yeah, so after a decent tussle, that was crayfish number two in the bag, and as you can probably hear, I was pretty relieved. Now out of the corner of my eye while I was looking for these crayfish, I noticed the sand dagger ass had been following me around for ages, so broke open this kinna and it actually came right up and I could feed it straight out of the palm of my hand, which was just insane. Not many places in the world you get these opportunities, so I'm always grateful about living here in New Zealand where this sort of stuff is so easily accessible. You might have gathered by now, finding crayfish for me means finding these rocky, weedy sort of spots with lots of boulders. So this crayfish you're about to see was in quite an interesting spot, there was a bit of a gully and he was actually quite out in the open so he was pretty easy to spot. What I did is I backed around and came up from behind him and then once I was right on top of him, lined him up and bam, got both hands on him and out he came. Now take notice of this crayfish's interesting shell deformation. I'm not sure if this is a battle scar or perhaps something that happened during the molting process, but it's quite interesting to see. With the goal for this dive to get six crayfish, I was three down and three to go, so I kept trekking on and looking for more. I found this guy, and what I've been practicing more with my diving lately is really slowing things down and just getting close so that the crayfish are comfortable with you being there and you can actually see this one starts to come out a bit once he gets comfortable with me being there and then bam once he gets close enough both hands straight onto him and out he comes this one was actually the smallest cray for the day so far but as you can see well and truly legal and another crayfish in the bag now if any of you are familiar with your sea snail species, I would love to know what this thing is. Little sea snail slug sort of thing that I found. Um, never seen one before, and probably won't ever see one again, but if you know what it is, leave a comment, let me know, would love to hear it. Next crayfish, and this is another example of slowing things right down and getting close and comfortable before pouncing. Now that one put up an insane scrap, it really wasn't coming out of that hole easily but after a bit of persistence got it out and that was the fifth cray for the bag. All that was left was to get one more crayfish and that would be six in the bag 
And here it is, the last one. It actually ended up taking a long time to find this last one, but I was so happy getting it because that was the sixth crayfish and it meant I was going home with plenty to feed family and friends for Christmas. Okay, back out of the water from that last dive and uh, what a way to finish the trip. Got my limited six crayfish out there today, which was the goal. Really keen to take some of these back and share them with family and friends for Christmas, so couldn't have asked for a better dive to finish this trip. Wasn't actually as crayfishy as I thought it was gonna be. It was really hard work to get onto them. I really had to work for them today, but they were around, they were just in low numbers. So good, good mush and um, good dive. Well, that's going to bring this trip to an end, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. This has been a super memorable four days up here in Northland for me. So good to finally be out of Auckland and back up north, which is pretty much my second home. Um, and yeah, getting out of Kerry and then these last couple of days have been really magical. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'm going to head in now and head back home and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.